Hey Warpugs, today we're going to be checking out a request from Mask Shadow. This is on SCP-003. I am always interested in seeing the earliest SCPs. Um, I've been watching the When Day Breaks thing, but that of course is SCP-001. I'm always interested to see the first hundred SCPs. This one in particular is called the Biological Motherboard. This is done by the Vulgan. I have seen this one requested before. And it just missed the cutoff for me to be able to, you know, just shove it to the forefront of everything. But now we're going to check it out. This is the biological motherboard. It's a Euclid transfer, tran, transfiguration K-class scenario SCP. And this, I haven't seen a K-class in some time as far as one that could basically in the world but hey no time like the present guys subscribe if you haven't already leave a like and a comment on this video all of the Vulcan's links are gonna be down below let's get started biological motherboard yes good afternoon everyone my name is Dr. Miller, hey, and Miller. the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3 is to be maintained at a constant temperature of no less than 35 degrees Celsius and ideally kept above 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. No living multicellular organisms of category 4 or higher complexity may be allowed to come into contact with SCP-3. In the event of total power failure, if SCP-3-1 begins to increase its mass, assigned personnel must engage in skin contact with SCP-3-1. Ideally, personnel may use their body heat to return SCP-3-1 to above the critical temperature. Okay. However, Skin contact must be maintained even in event of SCP-3 reaching activation temperature lasting at minimum until SCP-3-1 advances fully to its second growth stage. Okay, so this thing is a Pokemon. It evolves. Wonderful. Let's go. Personnel who enter SCP-3's containment area must first be examined for body parasites of category 4 or higher complexity and sterilized if such organisms are present. All personnel who have come in physical contact with SCP-31 are to immediately report for sterilization afterwards. SCP-31 must not be removed from SCP-32 except in case of emergency procedures detailed above. Any uh -huh. significant change in SCP-32's rune activity, including pattern, frequency, or color, should be reported within three hours of occurrence. Cessation of rune activity must be reported immediately. SCP-32 must be supplied with power via the source designated Generator 0039 at all times. Description SCP-3 consists of two related components of separate origin, referred to as SCP-31 and SCP-32. Okay. SCP-31 appears to be composed of chitin hair, and nails of unknown biology, arranged in a configuration similar to that of a computer motherboard. Testing reveals SCP-31 to predate earliest known circuit boards by a factor of thousands of years. SCP-31 is considered sentient, but not actively dangerous except under certain conditions. Say what? SCP-31 was found on a stone tablet. SCP-32, on which it currently resides. Uh -huh. The runes on SCP-32 are not part of any known language, and emit pale, flickering light patterns. Okay, but can it run Warhammer 3 is the question, apparently. Let's go. SCP-32 is controlled by a non-biological internal computer, the contents of which are mostly inaccessible without risk of damaging SCP-32. SCP-32 is capable of controlled emissions of radiation, including heat, light, and anomalous radiation types. Uh -huh. SCP-32 contains an internal power source of an anomalous nature, which appears to have been losing power since several centuries before discovery. 
It is considered probable that SCP-32 was created for the purpose of containing SCP-31. Partially interpreted data recovered from SCP-32 may refer to a past and or potential future LK-class restructuring event caused by SCP-31. Uh-huh. SCP-3 was located by remote viewing team SRV-04 Beta. It appears possible that SRV-4 Beta was deliberately contacted by SCP-32. Other organizations have also been alerted to SCP-3's existence, possibly by similar means. Despite this activity, SCP-32 does not appear to be sentient, based on its lack of reaction to M03 Gloria analysis and procedures. This is... I'm looking at it now, and the runes could almost be considered a firewall. Just hearing the way this thing's being described, it sounds like a firewall. Let's go. When SCP-3 drops below the temperature of 35 degrees Celsius, both components react. First, SCP-31 enters a growth state characterized by an exponential increase in mass. Uh -huh. This growth state consists of two stages. Kay. In both stages, SCP-31 partially fuels its growth by converting matter around it, starting with any surrounding inorganic material, uh -huh. including atmospheric elements, then non-living organic material, including cells of dead skin, hair, chitin, enamel, keratin, and other biological materials. The first stage is always the same. SCP-31 will first increase its mass, then take a form similar in shape to an alpha uroid, brittle star, of 15 meters in diameter, including what appears to be a central processor of 3 meters in diameter. It will form sensory organs that appear to scan its surrounding environment and will partially convert the area around it to an unidentified anomalous substance. Uh -huh. SCP-32 seems immune from conversion. The second stage describes a growth alteration which occurs when SCP-3 comes into contact with living organic material. SCP-3 appears to template itself off of the organic material and will attempt communication with organisms that match its initial template or templates. Okay, it's already messed up. It's already messed up. I'm already concerned about everything involved in this. <sighs> God, I love SCP. Well, let's just follow on that simple adage. No matter w that simple adage that has proven right so many times with SCPs like this, no matter what or how screwed up whatever you just heard or saw was, well... There's more. Let's keep on going. In its second stage, SCP-31 may pause, slow, or change its growth, uh -huh. and will also convert inorganic and non-living organic elements into functionally similar structures while anomalously altering their physical makeup. Wonderful. While growth is consistent in the first stage, in the second stage, SCP-31's growth rate is diminished by 20 to 90% as long as SCP-31 remains in contact with living organic material. Uh -huh. The percentage is determined by the complexity of the organism or organisms in contact with SCP-31. SCP-31 appears to devote a large amount of processing power to analysis of living organic material. <laughs> During each of SCP-31's growth stages, SCP-32 releases <laughs> bursts of radiation that temporarily inhibit SCP-31's growth, or reverse this growth when the temperature of SCP-31 rises above 100 degrees Celsius. Similar radiation emissions have been replicated or recorded via other anomalous means. SCP-31's biology has been the subject of extensive study. Significant elements have been identified similar to scp SCP-1512 and SCP-2756, the latter two of which have no further confirmed connection with SCP-31 and no known connection with each other, and none of which are fully understood, technically even less understood than SCP-3, thanks to the extensive cross-disciplinary research on the SCP-3 objects. To date, no convincing analysis has been put forward which satisfactorily explains SCP-31's connection to these SCP objects or others, nor its connection to modern technology beyond appearance, 
and potential mimicry via unknown mechanism. Uh Uh-huh. Addendum 301. Acting on information gathered from linguistic analysis of SCP-32's runes and comparative data analysis, research team M03 Gloria has managed to establish a link between SCP-3 and for analysis of its functions. SCP-31 must now be considered sentient and is to be kept a minimum of one kilometers from and the resulting byproduct at all times. What? Addendum 302. SCP-32's power loss has been exacerbated by the procedures performed by M03 Gloria. On orders of 0510, M03 Gloria will continue procedures. Addendum 303. During M03 Gloria procedures, SCP-31 doubled its mass and began rapid structural growth. Temperature was immediately returned to 100 degrees Celsius. Growth and mass increase of SCP-31 continued for 9 minutes and 9 seconds, at which time a sustained radiation spike was produced by SCP-32. In response, SCP-31 returned to its normal state in 3 minutes and 39 seconds. New growth dissolved into a dusty residue which was collected for analysis. Both SCP-31 and SCP-32 ceased all detectable activity. SCP-32 did not resume activity until connected to external power source. SCP-32's runes glowed uniformly gray and did not resume normal activity for three hours. SCP-32 no longer appears to be able What is that? What in the absolute hell is that? ...to maintain containment area at a temperature above 35 degrees Celsius without external power supplied by generators 3-3 through 9. Addendum 304. The procedure detailed in Addendum 303 was repeated, and SCP-31 again entered a growth state. After 10 minutes and 13 seconds, SCP-32 once again produced a sustained radiation spike. SCP-31's growth stopped for 36 seconds, then it resumed at its previous pace. On quadrupling its mass, SCP-31 formed a coherent outer shell and body after a- Okay, this is concerning. This is really beginning to create a problem. Appearing to scan its environment and partially converting its environment, SCP-31 then breached containment. Lovely. Entering the observation gallery where nine members of M03 Gloria were present. On physical contact with the team members, SCP-31 encompassed them in rapidly grown appendages and stopped growth for 15 minutes. SCP-31 then resumed growth and rearranged the component parts of the center of its form to the shape of a 3 meter tall female humanoid, with peripheral tentacles shifting to extrude primarily from SCP-31's newly formed hair and spine. SCP-31 then produced rudimentary vocalizations in an apparent initial attempt to communicate with researchers. I've seen it. I have seen more than enough Tal propaganda to know where this is going. I have seen more than enough. An unknown individual approached the compromised containment area in company of a full squad of agents. The individual claimed to be acting on orders of 0510 and attempted communication with SCP-31. Following this incident, Agent Jackson of M03 Gloria successfully restored power to SCP-32 and activated backup generators to return the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius. SCP-31 returned to its normal state within 21 minutes and 7 seconds and was successfully recontained without incident. All nine members of M03 Gloria affected by SCP-31 were afterwards found to be physically unharmed with no residual side effects besides psychological trauma. Uh The converted materials of SCP-3's former containment area did not dissolve and are now under analysis. Okay, so why are they being sterilized? Addendum 305. In light of the previous incident, 0510 was removed from the 05 Council by joint decision of 05... 05... and 05... 
M03 Gloria procedures have been indefinitely suspended. Uh -huh. Special access program M03 Gloria required. Incident report A21B, cycle 8, for dissemination to O5 command and staff. Uh -huh. Interviewers redacted. Present O52, 5, 7, 10, and staff. Interviewed Dr. Tilda David Moose, M03 Gloria Lead. Excerpt 5A. I feel like I've heard that name before. I really feel like I've heard that name before. I just can't remember where I showed it. She tried to talk to us. We all heard her voice in our heads, in a sort of half language we couldn't fully understand. Some of the others passed out immediately. I lasted a little longer, but it wasn't because of mental fortitude. It's just that she was trying to tell us different things. She showed Jones a replay of all the memories of everything Jones ever felt anything about, all over the course of a few minutes. She ripped three of the researchers apart and put them back together unharmed. Uh -huh. She doesn't understand human emotion or pain, or very much about how we experience the world. Yes, I would say the containment procedures are necessary. Listen, she wants to remake the world into a paradise. A paradise filtered through her own alien understanding of paradise, but still a paradise designed for us, for humanity. She would be happy to make a paradise for any sufficiently complex organism she comes across first. Anything with a complex enough mind to accept her. Say, a dog or a housefly. If she breaches again, we have to be there first. What would it be like? I don't know. She showed us images. Not quite images. I can see them in my head, but they're not pictures. The closest thing I can think of is what you see when you close your eyes suddenly and tightly, but brighter and more complex. Huh. The images had metallic sounds associated with them, and sensory details that we don't have the words or concepts to describe. So basically, this thing wants to do something good, but in the process of doing that, would wind up doing something absolutely horrible because it doesn't understand the subject matter. I have seen, like, I'm a big 40K fan, and there is something very similar to that in 40K, really similar to that in 40K, so this is something I can readily grasp onto and understand, okay? Readily grasp onto and understand. The whole effect felt like words of some kind. I believe she wanted to see what we could understand, so she could understand us. She didn't have time to finish analyzing us. I don't know what would have happened if she had. This concludes today's lecture. Huh. Thank you for listening. If indeed you still are. Of course. And you are all dismissed. Thank you, Goodbye. Dr. Miller. Okay, so this is one of those things where the, the SCP in question is... I say this about all of them that I've seen so far, but they're all completely separate from each other with their own motivations, and I love that. Um, o, uh, o, 302 is specifically designed to contain this thing, a rudimentary containment, because this thing wants to do good, but it doesn't understand the subjects that it's actually trying to assist it wants to understand it, but it, it can never do that essentially this is AI and with this thing being the way it is if it got the chance to get out it would destroy everything and what what could be worse than a like there's a lot of things that could be worse than that but I can think of few things that might be more disturbing on a fundamental level than a reality created by a creature that didn't understand basic human emotions, drives, and ambitions. 
or what motivates us to get out of bed in the morning. Something that will try to create a paradise for us based off what it thinks we wanted versus what we actually do want. The Matrix was built around this. If you guys haven't seen The Matrix, the Encounter Reeves movie, um, the machine intelligence said it first tried to create a paradise for humanity. But humanity kept rebelling from that paradise. So it decided on another path. Um, so if I can say this thing reminds me of something, it reminds me of the AI from The Matrix. Just because it's trying its best, it, like when it gets loose and when it starts reaching out, it's trying 100% to make a paradise that people can be happy in. Now, why it's doing that, I don't know. And I doubt anybody wants to find out. In any case, guys, this was done by the Vulgan. Of course, it's awesome. I'm going to head out from here, and I've got a lot of work to do today. I'm still working on stuff. I'm always working on stuff. <sighs> Until next time, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, just leave. Just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below as well. And if you're feeling like supporting the channel, Patreon down below as well as Merch by Valk. I'm going to head out from here, and I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, don't trust anything with hair like that. I'm just saying. I've watched enough towel propaganda to know where it usually goes. It didn't go there this time, but don't let it access Rule 34, whatever you do.